Does being good count if being bad isn't an option? Imagine a future where we could transform ourselves with robotics, genetic modifications, and other technologies. Now, in that future, we made ourselves bigger, faster, stronger, smarter, healthier. Our lifespans increase as a result. Everyone gets superpowers. Now let's take it a step further. We use bioenhancements not just to make people better, but to make better people. I'm talking moral bioenhancements. Imagine that crime plummets, that wars are a thing of the past, that people go out of their way to help one another. Now, maybe there's some sort of inherent reward system that makes you feel better when you help another person out. Or maybe there's a negative aversion system that makes you feel bad if you start to contemplate something that would be immoral. In either case, you would get superpowers, but you'd be forced to be a hero. No one could be a villain. This sounds a lot like the plot to A Clockwork Orange, in which a sociopathic teenager undergoes an extreme technique to nullify his violent tendencies. But this isn't just fiction. It's a discussion going on in academic circles right now. If you do a Google search for the term, you're gonna pull up all sorts of papers with titles like Moral Bioenhancement and the Utilitarian Catastrophe, or Egalitarianism and Moral Bioenhancement. Many of these articles bring up the real problems with the concept of moral bioenhancement. First and foremost, who decides what's moral? If you have a morally mandated approach, that means someone in authority has to decide what is and is not moral. That means that person has to put him or herself in a position of moral superiority, and then they mandate the morality to everybody else. So what if this authority person decides that anyone with an opposing political viewpoint is immoral, and so that's forbidden? Or let's say the government's view on morality is dramatically different than that of the population's. You could end up with a totalitarian government. Or what happens if you enter a moral dilemma and there's no clear moral choice in front of you? Then there are the academics who say this entire discussion is pointless because we can't even agree on what is moral right now. And what we think of as moral today may not be what we think is moral tomorrow. On top of that, we don't really understand all the drivers that create ethical or moral behavior, so how could we modify them? We could see big problems like climate change or weapons of mass destruction get even worse rather than better. And this discussion also pulls focus away from a broader discussion on the ethics of bioenhancements in general. Those critics say that we are living in the early days of a new era in which we can use technology to improve ourselves. I'm living proof. Just a few years ago, I had LASIK eye surgery to improve my eyesight. It doesn't take a huge leap of the imagination to envision a future where we can actually push our abilities beyond the typical human performance. But that raises real ethical questions about accessibility and disenfranchisement and what it means to be human. But what do you think? Would moral bioenhancements improve the world? Or is the word enhancement the wrong one to use in the first place? I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring our show and making it possible. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that little like button and join the Forward Thinking Think Tank by subscribing to our channel. Then check out these other amazing videos right over here. It's the right thing to do.